welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And today I'm going to talk about all of the projects that I have made so far in 2023. So part of the reason why I wanted to make this video was I used to make monthly recaps on my TikTok and Instagram where I would go through and show every project that I finished in that month. For a while, I really liked doing this. It was like a little diary entry for myself to just kind of keep track of what I was making. And then it got to a point where I realized that I just was making things or I was rushing to finish things so that I could include them in that video. I also noticed that there was a period of a couple months where because I'm in school still, I just wasn't finishing very many projects. I think there was one month where I had like one finished project and then there was another month where I had like maybe two. And I found myself getting like not only a little bit stressed out by the fact that I didn't have finished pieces to show off, but I also found myself getting like weirdly jealous when I was watching other people's monthly wrap up videos. So I took a little bit of time to kind of think about this and I decided that for the time being, I am like not gonna make these videos anymore because if the videos that I'm seeing are making me feel a certain way, then my videos are probably also making other people feel a certain way. With a lot of things on the internet, it's hard to fit the nuance into like a 15 second video. So instead, what I decided is I will try and do quarterly updates. So once every three months on, I'll go through all the pieces that I've made and talk a little bit more about like the design process, how many hours it took, when I started the piece and just like give a little bit more insight on the project itself. Because I actually, I feel like that's more fun anyway than just seeing it flash on the screen for like five seconds. And that's the other thing is because of the algorithms and because of, you know, retention rates and audience reach and all of this like, crazy stuff. I felt like I was having to cut my clips shorter and shorter for each piece. So by the time I finished editing my little video, it would be literally 20 seconds. And I'm trying to like fit in all of the pieces that I made in a month and show them off in a way that makes them feel like appreciated enough. I don't know. All of that to say, this is what I'm doing for the time being. I think this will be really fun. So I'm just gonna go through and talk about all of my pieces. I have a couple of unfinished projects that I'll show you. But for the most part, all of these are finished, they're washed, they're blocked, their ends are woven in for most of them. And I think this will be really fun. So the first project that I finished this year was this knit cowboy hat vest. I made this with hand dyed wool from Glory Hand Shop. This is one of my Instagram friends. You can follow them at Glory Hand Shop or Larry Cassio. I loved knitting with this. I think the this wool for the background like really brought the piece together. And then the rest of these were kind of some scraps that I used up. I worked on this piece while I was traveling for the holidays. Let me just put this on because why not? It'll be fun that way. I'm also gonna knit during this video because I feel like it helps me concentrate more when I talk and I wanna work on this. So I mostly worked on this piece while traveling, which is fun because then it has like the memories of traveling associated with it. I finished this sometime in like the second week of January. So I'm pretty sure I started this, I'm pretty sure I started this like on December 31st or something. And I just worked on it a lot because I was on break. So then after posting about this a little bit, I had some requests for a pattern, so I wrote one up, had it tested, and literally the day after I released the pattern, I had a lot of people comment on a couple TikToks and some Instagram posts just saying like, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Like, what am I looking at here? And then I made a TikTok that I really didn't think would get very much traction because, you know, my TikTok was having kind of low engagement. So I was like, all right, this will just be like, my friends giving me advice on what to fix. And I made the TikTok, I'll insert it here. With no context, I want you to look at this and tell me what you think this is. I've gotten some comments today of people saying that they don't see the thing that it is supposed to be. So I'm just curious because I want my designs to look like what they're actually supposed to. And if it doesn't look like the thing it's supposed to look like, then I want to fix it and make it look like that thing. Again, not really expecting very many people to see it. And I had hundreds, hundreds of comments telling me what to fix about it, what was confusing about it. So as you can see, now it has this blue band, which some people say they don't like, but I like it and who cares. 
but uh, then I reworked it and made a whole other graph, made a whole other version. It ended up being kind of like this whole thing. I do have a pattern out for it now. I have this graph and then a new graph, which I'll show you when we get to that. But this one's kind of fun, kind of silly, and it was really fun to make. And I do really like the fit of it, actually. I'm very happy with the vest. I love how the neckline turned out and like the the sleeves, but I think this is one of my like best fitting vests so far, which I think counts for something. And then the next piece that I finished was, surprise, surprise, another vest. This one is crochet with uh, knit ribbing. I made this one with all secondhand slash scrap yarn. So this green yarn, my mom thrifted for me. It's this nice dark green. And then I used a cream boucle for the hat, which I love and this cotton, which was left over from first Luna Wears Trippy Tea, and then second, the Adina Cardigan by Mrs. Moon Heaven. I'll put this one on too while I talk about it. So you'll notice this one has a little bit different of a fit. I wanted it specifically to be a little bit bigger. I wanted it to be oversized. I don't love like actually how it looks on me. I feel like it needs a little bit more like filling out the chest or the shoulders or something. So I think I'm gonna sell this one, but I'm holding on to it for now since I'm releasing a pattern for this, which will be probably out by the time this video comes out. This vest was really fun to make. I also have made some adjustments to the hat graph based on the adjustments that I made on the knit version. But yeah, I really liked making this one. And I'm hoping that someone who kind of will fit the vest a little bit better wants to buy it. I feel like a lot of the time I just make things not only in my size, but like super cropped and exactly like to a specific way that I like it to be fitted. But I every now and then want to try making slightly different sizes. So that's kind of what this is. The next thing I made is a little bit different. This is the bunny balaclava made with Alexandria Massey's pattern. So I'll show it to you a little bit off my head first and then I'll put it on. I used some wool that I had left over from my tweed duck vest and then some like pink yarn that I just had in my stash. I love the circles on the bonnet. It's just such a cool way to construct a piece. I had a little bit of trouble making the headpiece because I don't have a styrofoam like head, which is what Alexandria uses for all of her hats. I have this thing where I can't touch styrofoam and I can't hear it. Like, I, it just makes me like shrivel up inside. It is one of the worst sounds to me in the world. So I can't get a styrofoam head and I'm sure there's other versions, but I actually don't live like super close to a craft store. I don't have a car and the public transit to craft stores is not like great from where I am. I could get to one easily enough, but it would probably be an hour to an hour and a half, which is kind of crazy. I live in Boston, it's a small city, but it would take me probably that long to get to, cra to get to a craft store. So I haven't really had the chance to like look at other options and I don't make that much headwear anyway. So I kind of just pinned it on my own head, like not into my skin, obviously, but uh, it's a little bit wonky at the back and that's on me for not having the right materials, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the way that it's designed with these like little pieces inside the ear. I did make some flowers to put on the outside, but I just, I haven't sewn them on for some reason because you know me, I hate finishing projects, but I have, they're like this color pink with a yellow center. And I think I made six of them. So I'll have three on this side and three on this side. And I think that'll really just like pull it all together. But let me show this to you on. And if you're wondering, I have actually worn this out a couple times. I am a big balaclava wearer uh, out in the city because it is like the only way to keep my head and neck warm enough. And I actually think that I look way better in balaclavas than I do just in like normal beanies. So I have worn this out a couple times in lieu of my normal balaclava. And I will say it keeps me very warm. I think it's really fun and I want to find um, like an event to wear this to because I think it's, it's just such a fun little piece. And especially once it has the flowers on it, it'll be like really together. But I've made a couple of Alexandria's patterns. I also made her star hat and I have been eyeing the crochet baseball cap. So you might see that at some point, but I just love the way that she designs things. Her style is so cool. If you haven't seen her or don't know her, then I highly recommend you check her out. 
I'm just saying this as like a friend and a fan of hers. I love her pieces. She also occasionally does customs and drops and things like that. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this. And that basically rounds out the projects that I finished in January. So now we're gonna go on to the projects that I finished in February. First up is, surprise, surprise, another cowboy hat vest. This one has the updated graph. I used the Hobby Tweed Delight for the background of the vest. This was left over from my Tweed Duck vest as well. And then I just used some scraps that I had laying around for the hat. This one was kind of fun because I felt like I had this really cool like critique situation going on with my TikTok comments and people helping me adjust the graph and things like that. I feel like because I was trying to knit the graph really quickly, the fit of this one is just like, okay. I actually really, really liked the fit of the other one a lot more, which makes sense because I did it slower and all of that. But this one, I do like how it turned out. I like that it's cropped. I feel like I'll use this one more as like a layering under things piece because of how cropped it is and the fit of everything but I do like how this one turned out. And then the next project that I finished in February, I actually don't have any more because somebody bought it. So I'll just have to put some pictures on the screen while I talk about it. But I made this balaclava with some yarn that was sent to me from Arcane Fiberworks, and then this kind of brown boucle yarn that I had in my stash. And the person who bought it is Gray Scooey. I believe that's how you say her name. And she sent me these absolutely stunning pictures of her wearing it with some of her own work. I love all the things she makes. She's another person that like, if you don't follow her already, exit out of this video and go follow her immediately. You will not be disappointed. She makes the coolest knitwear pieces and she incorporates silk from silkworms that she raises from an egg. If that's not like the coolest thing you've ever heard, I don't know what is, but she is an incredible artist and I'm so honored that she now has something that I put my hands on and I can't wait to buy something of hers. The next piece that I finished is something that I have been working on for quite some time. It is this oversized cardigan, which is a collaboration with the Hobby Lab. This, their yarn is so beautiful. It is this really cool art yarn. So it has all of these different textures woven into it. And the yarn that she sent me for this project also has beads in it. So there's like, you can see kind of in the sleeve, there's all of these beads that have letters on them, which I just think is such a fun little touch. So looking at this cardigan, you wouldn't really like believe how long it took me to make because it's such chunky yarn that it feels like it should have been a fast project. But I think because the yarn was so bulky and I couldn't like bring it with me places, it just took me forever to make because I always have to have a project that I can just like throw into my bag on the go. And this was not one of those projects. So it ended up just kind of like getting pushed to the side a lot and me not working on it. But I'm in the process of writing a pattern for it, which I will co-release with the Hobby Lab on their platform and also on my website. It's been a very long process. And that's all I'll say about that. I do love the yarn. I love the fit of the cardigan and I'm happy that it's finished because it took a really long time to make. The next project that I finished in February was my Anything Raglan. So this is a project that I knit for uh, the video tutorial that I just put out, which I will put a card up here if you want to go follow that. I feel like everybody has been wanting to knit raglans, at least like in my friend group. So I just decided to put together a tutorial and make it happen. This is made with this beautiful dark purple yarn that I unraveled from another project that I bought at the Make and Mend basement sale. Let me put this on while I continue talking about it. Make and Mend is a secondhand craft supply store in Somerville, just outside of Boston. And every now and then they'll have a fill a bag sale. So you bring a bag, you pay a flat fee, like 10, I think mine was $10. And then you just fill up your bag with all of the secondhand craft supplies that they have just in their basement. It's like pretty chaotic. There's like a lot of people there. I had to wait in line with my friend Alana for like 30 minutes maybe, but I got so much incredible yarn out of it. And some of that yarn was this dark purple yarn here. It was knit up as like part of a panel to a sweater, but I felt like the needles that the person used were like a little bit small. So the gauge, it was just like kind of stiff. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. The light purple mohair was leftover Diablo mohair that I bought for a 
wavy color block sweater and it just used like way less than I thought I would need. So I've had leftover of it for like a really long time and I've been using it in a lot of projects, which is super fun. The other fun thing about this raglan was that I made it while I was in an opera. So I brought this to a lot of my rehearsals and I felt like it was kind of the, the project that I worked on like during the show. So I went to my like zits probe rehearsal, I went to staging rehearsals and I went to like the dress rehearsal and I was working on this top. So it's kind of a fun reminder of the show, like a little souvenir that I get of the memories that I had while doing that show. And if you're curious, here is a picture of what I looked like in the show. I was a little supporting character. I was a spirit. If you know anything about opera, it was the Magic Flute, which is like one of the most popular operas I feel like to do these days in at least like the level of opera that I'm in. This is my second time doing the show. The first time I sang the First Lady and this time I sang Second Spirit. I was also cast to do Pamina in a regional opera company, but that got canceled because of the so. Anyway, that's everything that I made in February. So let's move on to my March makes. March has been a very productive month so far because I have been ignoring my other responsibilities and knitting and crocheting. I also have finished my opera for the year. I finished my like year end recital. So now I have a lot more time to actually like work on projects. I have a lot of other work that I should be doing, but I have kind of been pushing that off a little bit so that I can work on some of these projects, which I will show you now. So the first thing I finished in March was this scrap scarf. Ooh, I'll put this on, I guess. This was something that I made in like basically one sitting. I had a like singing gig. And then when I got home, I had this big assignment and I didn't want to do it. And I have been like trying to do some scrap projects recently so I can clear out my stash and buy new yarn. And I sat and watched the entirety of the second part of You Season 4 for like seven hours working on this scarf, woke up the next morning, did some more work on it, and then it was done. So <laughs> this was a really quick project, but I'm really glad that I did it. Actually, I'm super happy with how it turned out with like the gradient of colors down to the yellows at the bottom. I actually started... When I was making this, I started like here, I think, because I was gonna have this be the end, but then I realized halfway through that like it looked so much better with this at the end because then you can see the fun colors more and then the boring colors are kind of more around my neck. But this is really fun. I have yarn from a lot of different places on here. This yarn is from A Wild Offering. This orange yarn is from eBay. It was one of my like first eBay yarn purchases. This yarn is from Arcane Fiberworks. This is my Baja Blast yarn, which was from the first sweater that I unraveled. Here is some more of that Tweed Delight. This is Malabrijo Rasta that my sister got me for Christmas. And then we get into more just kind of random thrifted scraps. And then it is symmetrical on the other side but with a different shade of the Arcane yarn, everything else is the same. I talked about this a little bit on TikTok too, but I have this habit of like only wanting to make scarves as soon as winter is like done. So last year I did this too. I made the square up scarf kind of in late February, which little did I know last winter that there would still be like two more months of freezing weather. <laughs> but this year so far, it's like the end of March and the weather's really nice today, actually. It's like almost in the 60s, I think. So I have gotten some use out of this scarf. I think I've worn it like three times so far, which is pretty good for only having made it like a couple weeks ago. But I just think it's silly that I only want to make scarves when it's not cold anymore. This was like a really fun hyperfixation project to distract me from my earthly woes. And I usually find scarves to be very tedious, which I think is why I don't really gravitate towards making them very much because they're so long. But I made this with a, I believe a 10 millimeter hook and mostly like bulky weight yarn or yarn that was doubled up. So it was bulky. 
and I think that really helped it go faster. Probably did still take like 10 hours when I count like adding the border that I added to make it a little bit more secure and weaving in the ends and then washing and blocking it. Another thing about this scarf is that I feel like I have accidentally brought a lot of like conversation about blocking to my page, which like, to be fair, I completely brought it upon myself, but I don't want to be an expert in blocking because I don't really feel like I know that much about it. I sort of just do something and it works. Uh, but now people are asking me for tutorial and all of this stuff and like, I don't want to because I feel like I don't do it right. But I will anyway, because who says it's not right if it does work? But anyway, this, I did block this scarf. I laid it on my ground and because I don't have that much space, I just folded it on top of itself. So it took a little longer to dry, obviously, but with the way the radiators work in my apartment, they're like so hot and dry that it honestly didn't take that long to dry. So yeah, that's enough about this scarf. I feel like there really wasn't that much to say and I just went on and on. Can you hear the birds outside? It's so nice. It, the weather is so nice today. The next thing that I finished is the knit on fire sweater. This baby took me forever to finish. I made this as an art trade for art that I got probably in October. Basically what happened was I reached out to this person over the summer to do an art trade for a rug with like basically my logo and then a mirror with my logo on it. And essentially what happened was it just like took a long time to coordinate everything. And by the time we had like figured out all the details and sent measurements and things like that, I had already started school. And by the time I started the semester, I was just like swamped with things. I was in an opera last semester that had rehearsals basically every day for like four to six hours. Maybe that's exaggerating, but a lot, a lot of rehearsals. And so I just never had time to finish this, but I finally finished it. I just, it is like freshly washed and blocked. I haven't even made any other videos about it yet or taken pictures in it. Uh, let me put it on because it's beautiful. I just think that this turned out absolutely perfectly. It was a bit of a pain in the ass to make, I will say. And I have had requests for a pattern and I probably will write one, but it's possibly gonna take me some time and I probably will not make another sample. So I'm gonna have to send this off after like making sure that I get enough pattern promo stuff ready before I send it. But yeah, I just think it's so fun. I love the way that the flames on the sleeves turned out and obviously the flames everywhere else. I made this with the Cascade Superwash wool, which I hadn't worked with before, but I really enjoyed working with. I like the way that all of the color work turned out. And I feel like, especially after washing and blocking, it has just like such a nice drape to it. So I'll definitely be using this yarn again. And this is the person that I did the art trade with. You should definitely follow them because I'm sure they'll post about this once they receive it. And I should send it like really soon. They have been so gracious about this taking forever, but you know, I, I still do feel bad. Uh, I think I started this in November maybe. And this was one of those projects that I was like, oh, I'll bring it to all my opera rehearsals. And then I'll just like work on it when I'm not on stage. But it just, it ended up kind of being that I had to be like mentally present the whole time that I was there. And so I couldn't really work on anything. I'm really sad that I have to send this away because I, I really, really like it, but I don't know if I like it enough to make myself another one right this moment. Stay tuned for a pattern for this. Maybe I'll wait until like the fall to release it so that I can get a little bit of time away from it and then come back to it. That concludes all of the projects that I have actually finished. But I do have three bonus projects to show you that are basically finished. So today is March 27th, and I'm pretty sure that I will finish all of these by the end of March. So technically they will fit into this quarter. Not that anyone really cares, like a few days, give or take, but I wanted to include them because they're fun and I wanna show you. The first one and the one that is the closest to being done is this really cute Triceratops vest. You may notice that the ends are not woven in and it's missing ribbing on the sides. And that's because 
Those are always the things that I don't want to do. So here is this vest. This is again with that same green thrifted yarn and it has like a little bit of a smell. So I did wash it like at this point, but even holding it right now, I'm like kind of still can smell like the thrift store smell. So I'll add the ribbing onto it and then give it another wash just to be nice and careful. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. I made this whole project like quite fast actually. Over my spring break, I went to Chicago and I brought this with me just kind of as like an extra project to have on the side, but I ended up just working on it quite a lot while we were like training around and stuff and then finished like this much of the graph on the flight and then finished up the rest of it yesterday while trying to frantically catch up for the Succession season four episode drop that happened last night. So here it is on. I really like how this little guy turned out. I ended up adding quite a lot of surface crochet detailing on this one because I felt like the contrast between the grains maybe wasn't strong enough otherwise. Yeah, this one is looking really cute. I'm happy with the length of the crop and the width of the shoulders. I feel like recently I've been making my vests with like really wide shoulders just because I am trying to make them oversized and then I forget that I have to like decrease to actually fit the width of my shoulders. So this one is looking pretty good. I hate doing crochet ribbing, but I do think it looks quite nice. So crochet ribbing on this one, but yeah, you'll probably see this one again quite soon. My next project that's almost done is a little bit ridiculous, but basically I had this idea, I drew it in my notes app, and once I had the idea, I couldn't not make it. I'll show you what the other side says in a second, but first of all, I just want to say I'm so happy with this color combination. I know I didn't have enough of any one of these colors to make a whole vest, but I thought that they would look good together and thankfully I have not been proven wrong. So without further ado, let me show you what the front of the vest says. Curtis Connor? I hardly know her. Here's what it looks like on. I made this one specifically like quite oversized, at least compared to like the vests that I normally make. I made the armholes a little bit higher because I've been noticing that that higher armholes read as like a little bit more of a masculine fit. And that's kind of what I wanted for this one. And then something else that I did on this project that I haven't done before is I added a reinforced surface crochet line around the neck hole. I feel like this just blends between like the body of the vest and the ribbing a lot better, especially when there's such high contrast between like the black and the super colorful. Um, and this is something that I noticed when I am unraveling sweaters that they often do this. They'll add like a line of surface crochet around to just reinforce the collar. And I feel like it works really well. So I wanted to try it out and I'm really happy with how that looks. I obviously haven't blocked or washed this yet because it's not finished. And of course, I'm just at the point where I have to add ribbing to the armholes. And again, I made this a little bit big for myself, but if you like Curtis Connor, you should tag him or send him any pictures that I post of this because I think it would be cool to loan this to him, to sell it to him, whatever. And I know he's going on tour and his tour is called Down Under I Hardly Know Her. So this would kind of be perfect, but I haven't really posted about this yet anywhere. So I don't know what the reception will be like. I'm editing and I just realized I need to make an update because I posted about this and then Curtis Connor commented on two of my posts. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's my update. It's crazy. And my final work in progress is this dinosaur graph that I am going to turn into a pillow. So I have this front panel and then like half of a back panel. There's probably a better way that I could have done this. Like I could have crocheted this up from the bottom of this, but I just didn't really think about that, to be honest. Making two panels, I'm just gonna fill it with some polyfill that I have, but also, this entire bag of scraps and I'll probably add more because this doesn't even like fill up the inside. But my plan is to kind of put this in the center and then stuff polyfill around it. So that way it takes just like less polyfill than it would normally, but it still has that nice 
pillowy shape. I'm gonna go through this bag probably before I stuff it and see if there's any scraps that are like salvageable because I have been inspired by Aiden Wells and her green scrap sweater and I am making my own scrap sweater of pink scraps. I already went through the bag for pink scraps but I have a feeling I'm going to want to do different colors next so I'm gonna go through it, pull out anything that I think I could use in a different color and then like realistically, there's so many scraps that I have that are just like either too short for me to use or that like I probably won't use again in anything. And even if I tried, I have plenty of other yarns to go through. So I'm happy to encase some of that into a pillowcase. But yeah, I feel like my couch needs a little pillow. I have been wanting to do a project where I can like really use up a large amount of my scraps to stuff it. And I think this graph looks like really cute as a pillowcase anyway. So this will go on my couch. The brown of this matches my couch really well. If I finish it before posting this video, which I probably will, I'll insert some clips of what it looks like in its new little spot. But that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then feel free to smash the like button consensually down below and also subscribe for more videos like this and more tutorials. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, then tell me what your favorite snack from Trader Joe's is. And if you don't have a Trader Joe's where you live, tell me what your favorite snack is. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.